Hello, my friends. Today, we are going to look at another example for electromagnetic induction. This question is from Winter 18, paper 41. It's a slightly different question. I think it's word to be discussed. But once again, state Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which we have done so many times throughout the playlist. So I shall just skip and give you the definition now. Induced EMF is directly proportional. Okay, so the term induced is compulsory to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Okay, where the marks are a bit inconsistent, but if you write the whole sentence, you get two points. Moving on to B. Solenoid S is wound on the soft iron core as shown in figure 9.1. So there's a solenoid S here. This, one, this entire thing is my solenoid. Cannot really see. Okay, this entire thing is my solenoid. Right, and there's another coil C up here, okay, noted. And then there's also a hall probe down here. Hmm, many things, oh no. Okay, moving on. Coil C has 180 turns, 180, 120 turns of wire wound on one end of the core. So the magnetic field, right, when you close this, well, the good news here is that I can actually see the current flow for this one compared to some previous examples. So let's say you close the switch, you can see that the wire actually connects upwards, coil backwards, and connect again. So this is the direction of your current flow downwards. So if you take your right-hand grip rule, look at the screen, your fingers will follow the direction of current flow. So it should be like this. Thumb is pointing downwards. So the direction of your magnetic field would be something like this. Okay, the purpose of the soft iron core is to extend the field, the magnetic field, the magnetic flux beyond the coil. So thumb was pointing down, so this is the direction of your B. Cool. All right. So that would be the magnetic field and the magnetic flux density in between both this coil C and this hall probe. Hiya. Cross sectional area of the coil is 1.5 cm square. I smell some flux calculation ahead of me. In my near future, I ask my crystal ball or I ask myself who have done enough past years. Okay, next one. A hall probe is close to the other end. When there is a constant current in the solenoid S, the flux density in the core is 0 0.91 Tesla. The reading on the hall probe, voltmeter connected to the hall probe, voltmeter connected to hall probe is 0 0.20 Tesla. Okay, so we have quite a few things going on here. I would like to label them first because I got two voltmeter and I don't want to confuse myself, okay? So the voltmeter that is connected to the hall probe, this voltmeter will obviously measure the hall voltage. Hall voltage, let's say we call this VH. This VH is proportional to the magnetic flux density. So if you don't know this, go and watch the video playlist from chapter 22. The role of the Hall probe is to measure or detect the magnetic flux. That means if you have magnetic flux, you will have Hall probe reading. Okay. What about the second voltmeter connected to coil C? This voltmeter, because there's no power supply here, this is not a hall probe, obviously. So this is to measure the induced EMF. Okay, they hinted to you in part A to ask you to define Faraday's law. So surely the question have to be related to induced EMF. Or you can see there's a closed loop here. There's a coil here. Okay, loop together in the closed loop with a voltmeter. Definitely there's induced EMF. So induced EMF, and this induced EMF, let's say I call this E, is proportional or equal to the rate of change in magnetic flux. However, flux is equal to NB 
A. And your B is proportional to your current flow. So basically, if I change the current inside the solenoid, I will change the flux and I will induce EMF. So what this measure, this is to measure changes, I put big capital, changes in flux. In this case, uh, many things, I mean the very obvious change here is current because you turn on and turn off the switch. Okay. Maybe. Don't know. Read question first. Okay, now I feel a bit confident. One volt meter here is to measure hall voltage. If got hall voltage, means got magnetic flux. One volt meter here is to measure whether that magnetic flux got changed or not. If this one got reading, it means that there's a change in magnetic flux then linkage, meaning there's a change in the value of B, magnetic flux density. Cool. Okay, let's go one. Calculate the reading on the voltmeter connected to coil C during the time that the current is changing. Okay, what did the current change? This current, oh, current in solenoid S is reverse. Oh, snap. If you have done the previous examples, let's say, for example, you are a student sitting for this session, you have done the previous example, you would know that, oh, reverse, or oh, reverse, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. This means that the field or the current will reverse in a time of 0 0.13 second at this constant rate. So this is your magnetic field. Okay, the current is reverse, meaning I reverse. So you go from 0 0.19 Tesla to negative 0 0.19 Tesla. So it will flip direction, you have a negative sign. So we're going to start off first with uh, induced EMF is equal to the flux dt. So the induced EMF here would be equal to the change in flux over the time taken for it to change. Let's continue here. What is the change in flux? The change in NBA over T. Let's pluck out our constants. Number of turn in coil C, N is constant. Okay, area is constant. What you have left is just delta B changing magnetic flux density over delta T, time taken for this to change. All right, so from here we will continue. Uh, I have the number of turns, 120. I have the area, 1.5 centimeter square converted to meter square. So 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay, the change in magnetic, magnetic flux density was 0 0.19 to negative 0 0.19. My good friends, can I just put 0 0.19 times 2? Because you go from 0 0.19 to 0 to negative 0 0.19, the total change will be 2. Divided by, how long did it take for it to reverse? 0 0.13. Okay, identify your constant. Pluck it out. Identify the constants. Pluck it out. The only thing that changes is your B from negative 1.9 to 1.9 here. Change in B. All right. So from here, we will press our good friend, the calculator. And you will get your answer at 0 0.0526. You could put 0 0.053. Okay. You could even write this as a standard form. But I think this is good enough. Okay. 0 0.053. 2SF law. Or you can write 5.3 times 10 power negative 2. Whichever suits you. So this part is only 2 marks. Wow. You can see the questions that are earlier have more marks, right? Later questions are a little bit more stingy. So where are the marks? Obviously, when it's two marks and you are not given an answer, one mark will be at the answer. And one mark will be at this substitution, the whole thing. So this mark scheme is actually quite severe. It's all or nothing mark scheme. <laughs> Do or die mark scheme. Okay, so you got to substitute the N, the A, and notice that the reason why we have induced EMF is because the current is reversed. So hence our initial guess is correct.
current reverses will change the magnetic flux density which will change the magnetic flux linkage in C which will change no lah, no more change already which will induce EMF according to our good friend Faraday okay so all these things here you gotta know right so you should be able to it's like a Russian dollar cool you reverse the current you change the magnetic flux density you change the magnetic flux from Faraday we will induce an EMF pretty cool so we now have the voltmeter reading 0 0.053 or 0 0.0526 okay 2 SF huh? 2 or 3 SF Complete the table. Wow, this table. This table is four marks. Mm, looks very worth it. Okay. For the times before, during, and after the direction of the current is reversed. Okay. Before the change means you change already or not? Not yet. So what should the voltmeter reading be? Don't forget the voltmeter reading that is connected to coil C. This voltmeter reading reads the induced EMF. Okay, let's do this part first. So, if before change means no change, right? If there's no change, then the reading of the voltmeter will be zero. Cool. In vote. No need to write unit. During the change. It's an like English question, right? So while you are changing is 0 0.053 law. After the change, got change or not? <laughs> no change. Change all already, Ma. Do you want to change what? No change, oh? Zero. <laughs> wow, miss, life is good. Ah. Ah, correct. Ah. This entire row correct is one mark. Okay. This entire row is one mark. Wow. Why? Uh? Because the whole probe haven't asked yet. So the next one would be reading of the voltmeter connected to the whole probe. Our good friend the whole probe measures the hall voltage. And our hall voltage is related to is there any magnetic flux? Uh, well, children... When the current is zero, a zero, bro, I write here, I is zero, magnetic flux density is zero. So, Hall voltage will be zero because Hall voltage is proportional to magnetic flux linkage. Got Hall voltage, that means got magnetic field. No Hall voltage means there's no magnetic field. Okay? So that means after the current change, uh, you now have magnetic field already, right? Because what will happen is that your current will go from your magnetic field basically for this one. Uh, this is 0 0.19 Tesla. Nah, they say one more here. 0 0.19 Tesla here. Okay? So if this is 0 0.19 Tesla and your current is reverse, so this is negative 0 0.19 Tesla. If you flip your current based on your understanding of your whole voltage, right, the polarity of the sides will flip. Because you change the direction of current, meaning you change the direction of your magnetic force, meaning now you will sweep your majority charge carrier to the opposite side of the conductor. Or you don't want to think so much means, oh, current flip now. Magnetic flux density will flip. Whole voltage will flip. Polarity. Much flipping ensues. <laughs> Okay, so where are the marks? Well, my friend, uh, if you write 0 here, you get 1 mark. <laughs> you write 0 0.2 here, you get 1 mark. You have a negative here, you will get 1 mark. Okay, so I did wrote the value of B as 0 here. The B is 0 Tesla here. Okay, so these are the values of B. Uh... Specifically, just to be, because there are two different coils here, this is the B of your solenoid. <laughs> but what about the magnetic field in the coil? This 0 0.053 is when there is 
magnetic field in the coil because it's trying to oppose the change. Okay, so this part is really, whoops, my head is blocking. This part is really testing your understanding to see whether you know the difference between uh, the induced voltage. So is there a change? No change, no induced EMF. Got change, change during the change, got induced EMF. The difference between this V and this other voltmeter reading, which is connected to the Hall probe, if connected to the Hall probe, we measure magnetic flux. In specifically, because of the position of the Hall probe, right underneath the solenoid here, it will measure the magnetic flux of the solenoid. Okay? So when the current is zero, there's no magnetic flux underneath. Fun fact. If I put the whole probe here, <laughs> this is a third voltmeter. Then, this whole probe will always have reading. It may not always have the same reading, but it will always have reading. Miss, what happened when this solenoid got no current? This one will induce its own EMF to oppose the decrease in current. What? Right? You take away its... First, you didn't give it any flux, and then you turn on your switch, you give it flux, it goes like, great, now I have to oppose this increase. Then you take away the flux, it goes like, hey, why you take away my flux? It will increase back to oppose that decrease. So whether, as long as this current changes, there will be a magnetic field induced in this coil. So this hall, if you put the hall probe here, this hall probe will always have reading. Okay? So think about that, give the idea some thoughts. But thank goodness in this question, they didn't put the whole probe there. If not, it will give us all a headache. So I will undo, undo. All right. So make sure you understand the difference between the whole probe, which measures your magnetic flux density, and your coil, which detects or quantifies the rate of change of flux. So one is got flux or not. The other one, did the flux change or not? Okay, so hopefully this example has been helpful. Okay, magnetic induction can be a complicated topic if you uh, are still unfamiliar with the laws. Okay, so take your time to go through it. Understand that uh, the whole main idea is just one. We change the flux, we induce EMF to oppose the change. That's all. Change the flux, induce EMF, oppose the change. How to change? Where is the change? Induce EMF in where? Where is the induced EMF? What happens when we oppose the change? Those are the three points. And as a sidebar, there's also a whole probe to help you measure whether there's flux or not. Okay? So because people, they study this part very fast, oftentimes they didn't pay attention to these final details. All right, so I hope this is helpful for you. Share, share this with your friend. Uh, learn A2 together. Let's do well together, if you're especially if you're in quarantine. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next quest next question, next video. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye bye.